Louisville, 42, UCF 35. This is from Friday night. And UCF has now experienced the full Gus Malzahn gambit in a grand total of three games. They got their massive blowout win over Bethune-Cookman last week, and then they go in as a more-than-touchdown favorite at Louisville who looked like complete garbage against Ole Miss. And, and yet, here we are. Dylan Gabriel, 22 out of 29, 184 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. UCF rushing the ball, 34 carries, 212 yards, 6.2 per carry. And, and they let Malik Cunningham throw the ball all over the yard. They let Malik Cunningham run the ball all over the yard. He was a one-man wrecking crew. He was awesome. Jalen Mitchell, they finally found somebody that can run the ball for him outside of the quarterback. I, a Brown Yeti said, Chris, are you saying Ole Miss might win the West? Uh, yes. That's uh, 100% yes. what Chris is saying. Like, <laughs> but Louisville is not a very good football team. However, betting against home underdogs this season well, in these in these in these weeknight games, especially not just this season, but for the last three or four years, you get one of these Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night football games, and you get the home dog. They cover at an insane rate. Both of them covered Friday night. There was you're blaming this on Malzahn. I'm going to tell you if this game was played Saturday at any time, it doesn't look this way. We just don't get it. I can't explain the mystique and the magic that happens on these games, but it just we don't get this performance if it doesn't happen Friday night. I, okay, I don't necessarily disagree. However, this is a, a Gus Malzahn feeling. This is what Auburn went through forever. Unexplainable losses. Unexplainable wins over teams that they should not be even competing with. And, and you see it all, right? The Boise State comeback, I mean, they were down, what, nearly three touchdowns in that game, and they come back and hold Boise with not Hey, by the way, did Boise score in the second half against against UCF? That wasn't Ooh, at home. Shit. I don't know if they did. And they, they may, I'm going to look back and see if I can find that. Uh, they they might have kicked a field goal, but I, I, can't, score. I can't remember. But either way, it, UCF, this is what happens with, with Gus Malzahn teams for whatever reason because he – some of the play calling, it's like he's still coaching high school, which is they got a, one. They got one touchdown in the fourth quarter. Okay, all right. So they, but they they held them, you know, from what they were doing in the first half for sure. But so Gus nothing Malzahn, in the, nothing in the third, nothing in the third, one touchdown in the fourth. So so again, Gus Malzahn coaches like he is still coaching high school, which can be a lot of fun, and it can take a lot of old school college football coaches off guard. It can catch them off guard because they don't expect some of these quirky just different formations, different personnel on the field, all that kind of stuff, right? It can be a lot of fun. It can catch people off guard. It can be super successful. It can also cost you ball games in certain situations. Uh, the The last interception there for Dylan Gabriel was not his fault. And and that, that part of the game was not his fault. The defense should not have ever given up what they did to Louisville. And some of this is, is for Scott Satterfield. Cheers to him for actually looking competent in this game. The The Players have not quit, so that's good. But Louisville put up 42 points on UCF. They were only able to muster up 30 points against Eastern Kentucky last week. Like, they looked like garbage against an FCS team. They were terrible. And then they come into this game and do this. They had a good game plan. Louisville looked good. This is not to not give Louisville credit. This is absolutely giving them credit. And and UCF should have won this game. They should have won the game. And, and yet they didn't. And now, because of that last play... Dylan Gabriel, uh, broken clavicle, like he's Up he's out, season. gone for the season. So now, do can it's Joey Gatewood eligible? Like I don't even know who's going to be the backup quarterback at this point. And that's uh, that's my fault for not doing research. But no, it's all right. I don't, and I don't know that I worry about it. I trust Gus. I think Gus is fine. Once again, Satterfield is a very good coach. This is a team that had a magical night. It's the best night they've had all season. Best night they've had in two years. You know, and, and it was bound to happen. You got a guy like Cunningham that's as good as he is. At some point in time, he was going to have a star night, a star game. And and there was no question in my mind, you're bringing in a team that is all offense and no defense. You keep bringing up how they should have stopped somebody. What has shown you that they could stop somebody? UCF hasn't stopped anybody in eight years. They don't play defense. They put a bunch of points on the board, and they say catches, okay? It, that's it. So the fact that Cunningham caught him, hell, 
that's what they do. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think you're wrong. And, and that didn't start with Gus, by the way. That started with Frost, and then and then Heupel, and now Gus. That they are built the exact same way, and every head coach runs the exact same thing. Their offenses all look different, but it doesn't matter how you play defense. They're not stopping anybody. You just don't have that kind of talent. They they play defense in a sense where we try our best to contain the run on the outside edges. We keep quarterbacks in pockets. And we play aggressive pass coverage, which is guys are going to be open a whole lot. Every now and then we're going to get a pick. And all we need is one more possession than you, and we believe we can win the football game. So if you get the interception once, but you give up four bombs, that's fine. They'll take it every time. Yeah. Uh, Louisville, 501 total yards. UCF, 416 total yards. Jumping into the chat here, because I, I, I will tell you this. There are still a lot of people that are salty about UCF going undefeated a few years ago. Cruz said, but Gary, they were national champions four years ago. Now on the Gus train. Woo, back to losses. Dats Square says, Gus is trash, man. UCF is way too good to look like that. Matt Miller said, any chance Cunningham transfers after this year? I think he is. Zero. I think he is what everyone thinks De'Eric King would be. No, I think I think he's there with Satterfield. I, I think. Not, well, not just there with Satterfield. This kid grew up a Louisville Cardinal fan. Like, he grew up with Louisville stuff like in his bedroom. Okay. That you're not going to get a guy like that to transfer. He's just not. Yeah. Even if Satterfield left for another job next year, I think he stays there, whoever the coach is, because you just don't change what you love. Yeah. I, I can fully, fully understand that. Fully under- Passion is something that you, you can't manufacture, right? It's why you play college football. Yes. Uh, Brown Yeti, Gus is the greatest coach ever. He just has someone betting against him when he's favored and for him when he's down. He's just getting kickbacks. <laughs> And then MTL edit said said go cards. So yeah, that that was I mean, this was a fun Friday night game. This was a hell of a game. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.